You may have heard it said that the world is your mirror. For instance, there could be a flower in a meadow, and two people could walk by, and one person thinks that flower is beautiful. Another person walks by and either doesn't even notice it or trambles it or thinks it's ugly or prefers another flower. It doesn't make the flower ugly and it doesn't make the flower, flower beautiful. One person might like the flower because there's something about the fragrance that the olfactory senses in the nose that just resonates with that person and lets that person know that there's something in that flower that, that resonates with you and is similar and same or me fulfills some sort of lack or need a person has whereas another person smells a flower and it repels them because your body is maybe sensitive to it or you have a weakness in your immune system so your body tells you you know stay away from that flower or don't like that flower it doesn't resonate well with me so lack or abundance lack or abundance may exist in the person rather than in the outside world you look at another person you see something you like or don't like about them that may say more about you than it does about the other person you ever heard the idea that what a person says about the world reflects more about that person than it does about the actual external world that they're commenting on somebody takes a look at something and says man that's ugly maybe they've got an ugly state of mind they see things as ugly they look for the ugly in things because they feel ugly and they've been taught to recognize ugliness or something along those lines and another person sees beauty in everything beauty in another person, beauty in things, and they, they look for beauty and they find beauty because it should seek and you shall find. So people will find what they're looking for. It's like a, it's like a case detective who believes that the suspect is guilty and he has it determined in his mind. His mind is not set on finding out what did or did not happen. If he believes that the person is guilty, he will set out to try to prove that. Uh, that he is guilty and so everything all the evidence will start to look like that person is guilty and vice versa if a investigator starts off believing that the person is innocent he could potentially decide to start looking at things as though they would say the person is innocent and wouldn't it be interesting speaking of the world as your mirror and what you say and think about the world around you may say more about you than it does the world um, what if you found out that in the grand scheme of things, in some odd weird twist of the imagination, some weird holographic, holographic inversion factor of reality, that what if you found out that you were actually me and I was you, and you looked at me and you thought this about me and you felt that about me, what if it turned out, what if they made a movie where there's two characters in it, and the characters in the first person and the person's you and as you go through the movie you're having all these experiences and this and that and the other thing and this other prominent character is in the film and at the end of the film it's kind of like a fight club type movie where you find out that the other character was imagined or whatever what if you found out that this character that all along in the movie you thought was the other the other person not yourself what if it turned out in the end that that actually was yourself and the illusion dissipated and you realize that that other person is you would it change all your views, change how you feel about them, change how you feel about, about yourself? How you feel about other people reflects a lot about how you feel about yourself. It's like in the New Testament, a uh, famous teacher once said, As you do unto the least of these, you do also unto me. Which is, uh, I don't know if most people recognize it or not, but that's, that's an equation. Um, and it's the person that said that was basically saying hey that little that, that that person the least of these the smallest child the least fortunate person the person that you that you think of as least and it's unfortunate that someone would think of another person as lesser but uh, Jesus said as, as you do unto these the least of these you do so all unto me and if you if you twist those words a little bit and I don't think it's a twist I think it's extracting the deeper meaning the way that you treat others is the way that you treat yourself because if you if you see ugliness in another person remember 
that you're actually that's a that's an evaluation you've made in your mind. The other person is is neither ugly nor beautiful necessarily, but you have made a decision or or something, and what it's based on only only you might know. Um, but that other person that you're judging is, is actually you in a sense, because another person might walk by and think that exact same person is beautiful. So is it that person or is it you? So so as you do unto the least of these, you do unto not me, but yourself. Say, say the verse as though it was coming out of your own mouth. As I do unto the least of these, I do so. I do also unto me. So the world is your mirror, and just remember when you're pooing it, hissing at somebody, or raising your fist at somebody, or paying somebody a compliment, or telling somebody that they look great today, or that they're doing a good job, or whatever. Whatever you whatever you shine onto other people is going to reflect back to you in an external and an internal way. So keeping that all in mind, um, I'm just I'm just thinking that. We should all um, all practice being beautiful and being happy and being healthy and being friendly and loving and all the other positive good things that we want to see in the world. Be, be the light, so to speak. And uh, I could go on and on about it, but I, I of course, won't. So...